All right, so welcome to the video, uh, anybody who might be watching my channel. So yesterday, or was it the day before? I think it was the day before, whatever. I was showing Claire here a bunch of magic cards and she insisted that they were custom cards. So that led me to the idea of having a game where I showed her cards and had her guess if they were real or not. So that's gonna be what we're doing today. Let me go ahead and send the first card. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be sending the card text to Claire and letting her talk it out and guess. And then I'll be showing the card to the audience and they'll probably know whether or not it's real if they're magic players. I'm not gonna show the card image to Claire because that could give her too many hints. But I'm gonna start with this card called Multiple Choice. Discuss whether or not you think it's real. Multiple Choice, Sorcery. If mana is cost is one? You said X is mana cost, correct? X is uh, X is a part of this card's mana cost. So it costs, this card costs X in a blue. So if you pay one blue mana, you can pay any amount of mana you want, essentially. Okay. Then draw a card. If X is two, you may choose a player. They return a creature they control to the owner's hand. If X is three, and a to create a 4-4 four, four blue and a red and el 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 elemental creature token, if X is 4 or more, do everything. Mm -hmm. I think... Okay, so last... The other night, I looked at like 30 magic cards with you, and like, this does feel a little in line with how they write their cards. I'm gonna go custom, though, just because I feel like they would want to do a card that says, do all of the above. This is a real um, magic card. Really? Yes. Already off to a bad start. <laughs> well, <Yeah. laughs> I'm surprised because of the multiple cards that I've seen, none of them have had any effect that's like, do every one of these effects. That's neat. Source uh, one quantity sorcer uh, sorcery type or whatever. Yeah, it may have cost of X and B, which is black. Mm. Create yeah. X, two, two, black, this black zombie creature tokens with decayed. What? What? Wait. What? Yeah, so this oh, is a, this is one of those split cards, one of the ones with that, are, that are sideways and have two halves. Uh, I hate this. <laughs> I think this does seem like it's real, is it? Sorry, uh, what's your guess? Real. You think this is a real card? I, I hate that card type, but this seems like something they would do. Uh, this is a fake card. This is not real. I, well, that's two to nothing. Cool. Well, cool. the thing is, this is a card that could definitely be printed. It just isn't yeah. real. Yeah, because I've definitely seen a card with a very similar effect of, like, the first line. Mm -hmm. Just, like, create a token with an effect. I've definitely seen a card like that. Mm -hmm. So it just seemed real to me because it's it's boring enough to be real. And it's one of those card types that I really dislike. The ones that are, you know, a split card. And I'm just like, hey, those cards are dumb enough. This could be a, this could be real. <laughs> All right, here's the next one. Okay, on to the next card. Misty Mothman. Creature, insect, flying, cryptic. Whenever this card is put, in, put into your library from anywhere else, create a 1-1 one, one white insect creature token with flying. And the one, bottom two, thing there is their stats. So that's one power, two uh, toughness. Uh, uh, so uh, the italicized text, that's what they like. Basically, sometimes they have keywords that aren't actually keyword because of how they're formatted. So they just all put the little like italicized thing in front of them to tell people that they're all related mechanically. I see. Uh, fake? Is that your final answer? I guess. Yeah, this is, this is a fake card. They do not have this. Cool. Cryptic is not a mechanic. It, I think it could be. I don't think there's anything wrong with it and within the rules. I mean, obviously having things trigger from a hidden zone is weird, but they could probably make it a replacement effect or something to get around that. But... In Yu-Gi-Oh, that's an that's a issue with a lot of game mechanics where hit, uh, game knowledge is a very important part of, like, if you have a face-down card and an effect triggers... The, you have to think of, like, the game mechanic will be like, is this treated as the card, or is it unknown game knowledge? And that's like, certain cards won't work if you either flip a card face down or put it either into the deck, or, or uh, there's some effects that are like, if this card is added to your hand, um, you can trigger it immediately to do an effect. 
but if you search it off of a random search, like there are some cards that are like, choose three cards, one of them gets randomly added to your hand, then it won't trigger because it's unknown game knowledge. And that's, that's weird. That's, it, that's I mean that's how this that's kind of how you said it where going from an unknown zone would it really it'd be a weird mechanic to do. Yeah, I mean they could get to work. They have just said like it just works before when doing mechanics and like done a bunch of under the hood stuff to get the game mechanics to work. Um, but yeah, this would be something that I I feel like they'd be very hesitant to do, mostly because it's like yeah, it, it's just like a whole a, a whole like thing, you know. It, it would take so long. It would, it creates more questions than it you know than it's worth. Yeah. So, I mean, that hasn't necessarily stopped them before. True. Like, oh, man, they, they, they had some real messed up mechanics. <laughs> all right, think I'm ready for the next one. Give me a second to just get it all tight. All right, I'm back. I'm ready. Okay. Try like Triskaidekaphobia. Uh-huh. It, it is the phobia of the number 13. Play card. <laughs> you haven't even read the that, effect yet. This is going to be fucking real, I'm just gonna say real. This is dumb enough to be real, but it's also I don't believe it. Is that is that your final answer? Is it real? Yeah. This is a real card. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Triskaidekaphobia. Yeah, I to send me a card of this moronic. If it, I'll read it out just so people, you know, will know I actually just tried. At the beginning of your upkeep, choose one. Each player loses with exactly thirteen life loses the game. Each player gains one. Uh, each player with exactly thirteen loses. Loses the game, then each player loses one life. Yep. So this, you get, you, this you, thing fake, and I did for twenty seconds before I realized you wouldn't send me a card that looks obviously fake. This is uh, I hate Magic the Gathering. Uh, I, what's the point of it? I'm I'm trying to figure out which one to send you next. Uh, all right. Oh. Well, you didn't answer what I said. What did you say? I, I missed it. I must have been... I asked about the point of this card. Oh, the point of this card is, like... It's basically an alternate win condition, where you just win the game if you put your opponent at exactly 13 life. It was actually a combo deck for a while, because there was this card, uh, Tree of Perdition, which... Here. This is, like, a callback to an old card. But it allows you to exchange its toughness of 13 with your opponent's life total. I see. So. God. God. That's so, that's so weird. Yeah. And the thing is, is that its toughness actually does change. So if that's seven life and you tap this, their life total becomes 13. This thing now has seven toughness. Which is <laughs> extremely weird. <laughs> Alright. So. One second. Next one's also a two first. So it's going to take me a second. Alright. So I'll explain the, uh, what partner with is uh, after you finish reading. Okay. Oh, that's a long text. That really is a long text. Jesus. Yeah. Edge of many heads. Legendary creature, Hydra. At the beginning of your upkeep, flip a coin. Whenever you flip a coin, if you flip heads, put a one one or plus one plus one counter on it of many heads. And it of many it of many heads deals one damage to any target. Partner with it of many tails. It of many tails. Oh, I... Legendary creature, Fox Spirit. At the beginning of your end step, flip a coin. Whenever you flip a coin, if you flip Tails, put a 1-1 one, one counter of, ta- of eight of many Tails. Draw a card. Partner with... Huh? Yeah. So, what Partner With does is it does it does different things depending on what format you're playing. So, in Commander, it means that you could have both of these creatures as your Commander, where you can, like, cast them from outside the game, like, sort of like an extra deck sort of thing. But you can only partner them with exactly the other creature listed. But in every other format, what happens whenever uh, a creature with Partner With enters the battlefield, it lets you search their partner, essentially. So, if you play Eight of Many Heads, it enters the battlefield, it searches up Eight of Many Tails. When you play Eight of Many Tails, it searches up Eight of Many Heads, essentially. And they flip coins. <laughs> I want to say this is fake. I, it just, I don't know. It just doesn't seem real. Although none of these do, but you know, might as well what, assume. What, what makes you say it's fake? It just seems dumb. Like it just seems overly convoluted for an effect that doesn't do anything decent. Or at least doesn't seem to do anything decent that like other cards don't do. You know, it's, it's convoluted in a way that I, even though magic can be convoluted, 
most of the cards I've seen at least are convoluted with a point or are worded in a less odd way. You know, I don't know how to describe it, but I don't know. It just doesn't. It doesn't feel real. Although you could, you, you're in twenty seconds could say, "Well, actually, uh, fun story. It's real." Is that your final answer? Yeah, I'm just gonna guess fake. You are correct. This is fake. Yeah. Well, absolutely. actually, there is actually like a pair of cards that are very similar to this that do exist, which is pretty funny. Yeah, I'll, I'll see. <laughs> At least I was right. You know, I had a feeling because it's just a. It just didn't make sense as a card, as in, like, the card text of magic is dumb, but it's usually not that dumb. Okay, let me read these two cards. Oh, um, I have chaos. Partner with this thing, uh, puts this, when this thing enters the battlefield, the player may put, I can't spell, I can't pronounce that name. Zip into their hand on your deck. Yeah, Gazoon type. At the beginning of combat on your turn, flip a coin until you lose a flip. Whenever a player wins a coin flip, double the sink's power. Uh, it's the exact same effect. Effectively, uh, you draw up for the coin flip, but it's the same basic effect. At yeah. the beginning of combat, flip a coin until you lose. These at least make sense, just because it's like, there's situational battle effects. Really? I, I compared feel like... to two cards that have the exact same effect with no, like, differences, which is basically the other cards. They're just the same card twice, just one is heads, one is tails. These two are different effects, but they are kind of tied together. So that, that makes a little bit of sense, I guess. All right, that, that's certainly a perspective to have on it. I, I, I feel like they're not that far away from each other, personally, but eh. And here's the next card. Ecological discovery. Diversity. Sorcery. Diversity. Sorry. If you control a creature with power greater than its toughness, draw. Go control a creature. The reverse of that, draw. Go look, if you control a creature with power lesser than its toughness, draw. It's power greater than toughness, power equal to equal toughness, power less than toughness. Yeah. So it could draw you up to three cards if you have three different creatures with those types of stats. Um, I love how you just ignore the mana cost on everything, too. I don't know what mana cost is, and I just don't need to. Um, I'm going to say this is honest. It seems, I guess, real. I don't know. Is that your final answer? Probably. Uh, this is a fake card. This is not real. Okay. okay. It just seemed like a weird effect, and... There's a lot of weird effects in magic. There are, but th this one happens to not actually exist. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm ready. Okay. Soul Flare, Creature, Demon, I need, delve. To, I need to tell you what the Delve keyword does real quick. So what Delve yeah. does is basically it it's very similar to Chaos Monsters, sort of, where like you can exile cards from your graveyard uh, to like help pay them. But how it works in this case is like, you see the four in the mana cost. Each card you exile from your graveyard pays for one of that cost. So if you exile I four see. cards from your graveyard, this is only two black mana. I see. Okay. If a creature card with flying was exiled due to the summon, this thing has flying. The same is true for first strike, double strike, death touch, haste, hexproof, indestructible, lifelink, reach, trample, and vigilance. Would you like to know what those keywords do? <laughs> no. I'm just going to say real. You're going to say this is real? Honestly, yeah. Is that your final answer? Probably. Uh, you are correct. This is a real magic card. Uh, I, <laughs> I thought you might get thrown off by the fact that it like has to list out every single ability it can get. But that that's yeah. like... <laughs> I've seen half of those and I knew they were real. And I just assumed the other half. Uh, well, I it... Just kinda thought in the dark and I was like yeah I know like I've definitely seen a few of those words on the card so I just assumed the rest were right yeah well the thing is is like the way the game works is that like you could just say keyword abilities but there's like there's a lot of weirdness with things that are technically counted as keyword abilities that it could get and also there are certain keywords that they don't want this having basically so yeah. the only solution is to like 
list out all of these abilities on the card, which makes them look terrible. Uh, but there's actually, like, a whole bunch of cards that do this, which is really... Yeah. Or, like, do similar things to this, at least. That makes sense. It's like, yeah, there's enough to where they don't... They can't just say all except this. So they just decided, yeah, let's just write it all. Who cares? Okay. Yeah. All right, one sec. I'm gonna... I'm gonna... Mute and type up the next card. Well, here's the next card. Wait a minute. Okay, so Delve. I thought it, I thought it was the same. Wait, no. Soul, soul Strike. Instant. Destroy non... No, destroy target non-enchantment creature. Yep, that's the text. I feel like I'm missing something. No, that, that's all the card does. Alright. Is it fake? Is that your final answer? Sure. Oh, uh, this is fake, yes. I had a feeling, because I knew, uh, similar to that other card earlier, that I said, like, it was too dumb to be, uh, like, the 13 one you, you showed me. It's like, this was 100% just to trip me up. Because I was like, I was thinking, I was like, well, it seems like a card from the first set of Magic, like, when they didn't know how the game worked. But early Magic, it, it has more, like, I guess, so the only time I praise magic, it has are it has less cards that are just awful, like early Yu-Gi-Oh. Early Yu-Gi-Oh is horrible to play. But I don't know. Okay. I I've I mean I, I'm not uploading them anymore, but a lot of people, you know, you look over my channel, look at the progression series that we're we're still playing it. But I'm just I, I have don't have the time to record and edit the videos anymore. But uh, early magic was pretty bad. It, it was not. There, there were a ton of just like garbage yeah. cards. Like shit you could yeah. never play. The thing like, is, so many was it was dreadful to play because there was twenty absolutely broken cards that were in every single deck because they were just like insanely powerful. And then you were like normal summoning a monster with a thousand attack and passing. Like yeah. it was the most boring game in history because it was who can get to Jinzo or uh, summon Skull without getting Regekied. Or who can get the giant soldier of some set pass first? It was horribly boring and terrible. Early <laughs> Magic was at least like whatever. You know, it's funny because yeah. Magic had a, a FTK in the very first set. <laughs> you can have that two sets in, I believe. I think Evasion of Chaos is the third set, I think. And it was, they didn't have an FTK, but they had horribly oppressive cards that would rip every card out of your opening hand and lock you from drawing. So basically, an FTK. Basically the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so the next one. Um, Chris, Crystalline Giant. Artifact Creature Giant. At the beginning of combat on your turn, choose a kind of counter at random that Crystalline Giant does not have on it from among Flying, First Strike, Death Touch, X-Proof, Lifelink, Menace, Reach, Trample, Vigilance, and put a one, plus one, plus one counter on... That kind of no, no plus oh. and plus one plus one. That's one of the types of counters amongst uh, all the keywords. I see. Put a counter of that kind on crystalline. I think it's fake. I it just doesn't make sense to me that they'd say choose a, one of these at random without like having a way to randomly choose it. It just seems dumb. Is that your final answer? Fake. I guess we guess, yeah. Unfortunately, this is a real card, and I say unfortunately for exactly the reason that you said. I have no clue why they thought this was okay. It's such how, a pain in the ass. How on earth do you randomly choose? You, you roll up, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Do you roll a ten-sided dice? If you have what? one, or you have to go to right, Google and click the RNG button and just yeah, fucking do it that way. way. It's it's a huge pain. Also, keeping track of the uh, the what keyword counters is also a huge pain in the ass because like they're hard to get and like. That's like. This is a card I wish was fake. It, it luckily it's not very good, so you don't have to actually play it or play against it much. You're never gonna see it unless someone is only playing it just to make you hate yourself. I see. Yeah, yeah, it, but. <laughs> I in my heart, I kind of suspected it was real because it seemed. Morgonic, I was like, there's, like, what, 
Why? I, I see. Do they make more cards like this that are just like, yeah, choose one of these at random? Like, do they make more like that? Or is it just no, I, I I mean, there are some things where you do choose things at random. Like, there are cards where it's like, choose a permanent at random or something. Uh, and that's also a pain in the ass. But those are cards that aren't meant to be taken seriously for the most part. Like, I don't know. Th this one is especially bad because it's like, it has the randomization that's very difficult to do on top of requiring multiple counters that are difficult to get a hold of and keep track of. So yeah. it, it's just a huge pain in the ass. Also the fact of like, this isn't a once per whatever. So having to do this, you'd have to do it again the next, like if, you, if this thing stayed on the field, you'd have to do it again, but just mm -hmm. rant like, yep. you're like, all right, so now you hit a one through nine or whatever, just ignore one of them. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, if you... And if you have multiple copies on the field, they all trigger and you have to do it multiple God. times. It's fucking, it's, I mean, this is a card, this is very much an arena or a Hearthstone card, you know? It's like definitely like, this, we were only thinking about the digital client when we made this card. Like, we were not thinking about actual people having to play the physical cards. <laughs> this was a joke for online games, I swear to God. <laughs> Alright. Alright, one second, I'm gonna mute. Yeah, let's move on to the next one. Fun fact, we're at number 10 right now. All right, I'm ready for the next card. You ready? On to the next card. <laughs> okay. I, I left the reminder text in for this one because you would need an explanation. Uh, oh, boy. Uh, Aeon. Aeon. Aeon Engine Artifact. Aeon Engine enters the battlefield tapped. Exile Aeon Energy. Ener well, you have to tap it and exile it, so you have to wait for it to untap first. Ah, reverse the game's turn order. For example, if play had proceeded clockwise around the table, it now goes counterclockwise. God. Okay, for those of you who have been keeping up, this is our 10th card. So this is the 10th custom card I've been sent. <laughs> um, God. Ugh. I hate this card. I'm gonna say I want to say fake, but it seems stupid. Like it seems dumb, like the last one. And I know you can play magic with more than one player. Yeah. Uh, for for, for the reference, uh, wh whether or not you believe me when I say this, this was for the commander set. This came out for like a, a in a commander precon, which is a, specifically a multiplayer format. So it, it wasn't like obviously in a one v one game, this literally does nothing. It has no effect. But it, it was designed only for multiplayer games. Is it real? That's my guess. Is that your final answer? Yeah, this is a real magic card. You absolutely gave it away, but okay. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I figured that that would make sense as a lie as well. <laughs> I mean, no, because I don't know any magic set, nor do I really know the names of any magic like format. So you having to say a real name, but like, I knew Commander was a thing. I was like, okay, that, that gave a fit to me. If you would have just said it was in a real magic set... I would have believed, I would have, that would have made it more confusing for me, but you giving a real name, I was like, okay, no, that, that makes, like, that makes more sense. All right, I'm gonna, I have to mute and type. Mm -hmm. Well, we're ready for the next card. Oh, boy. All right, um, huh. forbidding teachings, sorcery, as, as an additional cat, boss to cast. Forbidden teaching. Exile 13 cards. Once with Cadet you in 13. Second time. Uh, Start well, your library so, for a card and add it to your hand. Shuffle? Uh -huh. uh, so, uh, just for the number 13, and we, like this is not a giveaway since Triskaidekaphobia is a thing. Uh, on the plane of Innistrad, that's like a gothic horror set, they have like a whole cycle sort of of cards that all reference 13 because it's like, it's the unlucky number, Ooh, it's spooky. I don't know, it's just something they've been doing for a while. I see. I wonder if that set has four as one because I think that's the unlucky number in Japanese. Right? Yeah, but I mean, it's an American company and it's based off of like European gothic horror, so I don't think yeah. they drew that comparison. Yeah. That would have been neat though. That would have actually kind of neat. Um... Hmm. This feels... I'm gonna say fake. Uh, you think this card's fake? Yeah. Final it answer? Just seems, it just seems really boring. Yeah, that's my final answer. Although it probably could be real because of what you said about the set. 
but like I'm just gonna guess fake. This is a fake card. Uh, this is very similar to a card that does exist, where it's a tutor for like three mana instead of one mana, like this one is. Uh, but it requires you to exile the top thirteen cards of your deck, and that card's like terrible. Uh, <laughs> what game that somewhat made me think that? Was it just says shuffle and not like shuffle your? Oh no, that, that's how they write it. That's how they write the effect. Oh, that's just how it's supposed to be written. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, it I used to be like shuffle your library. That's what they used to put on cards. But then they're like, actually, we can just say shuffle. They like they know what we mean. Like just do it. Like just shuffle. I was actually thinking because that's I don't know how you 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 did that reverse where they started with some cards just being like like destroy one card and it's like where it's like, <laughs> oh, deck and the binder like you know it doesn't say and so then they had to go back and be like yeah you you shuffle your deck. Okay, oh, so I, the part that, that shouldn't, shouldn't have given it away to me gave it away because I just thought it was a mess. I thought it was just a spelling error. Oh, I, <laughs> I, right. had to, I need to show you this. Uh, so uh, this card was restricted for a while, uh, which means you only play one copy because uh, of, oh, like, I think this was actually a very similar thing to something that happened in Yu-Gi-Oh! where the card's effect was written wrong. So it just says when this goes to the graveyard, right? It's supposed to say when it dies, which means when it goes from the field to the graveyard. But the way this is written is like just if you discard it or mill it, it the ability will trigger. Yeah, if it ends up in any way, trigger. Yeah, that that reminds me of the card of Twin Head of Behemoth, where they did not say actually how the effect should work. It was like if this card it goes to the grave, I believe either from the field or either said go to the grave or whatever, uh, summon it back, but with a thousand attack and defense instead. The catch was, if it left the field again, it would get banished. Well, what happens if the card goes back to the deck, and then you summon it again? Does it keep that one-time effect? Because in the deck, all of all effects stop working, basically. Like, if a card goes back, it won't have, like, effect during the end phase or whatever, because it wasn't, by game knowledge, it wasn't on the field. Well, do you have to, if you have three copies, how do you know which copy activated? And that was a big thing of, like, what the hell is this card? Like, do does do you, does the card remember that it was activated? Does do you have to like mark the card so that way you'll know if you've activated this game? And then they just limited the card because they didn't know how to write it in a way that made sense. <laughs> that made sense until they. I, I've heard that story it. before. That's very funny. I think they wrote it at like eight times, and then they finally stuck. It finally made sense, and so it got off the limited list. Mind you, it was a unusable card. The card was horrible, <laughs> but they just didn't know how to write it in a way that worked. No, it was just a really funny part of like Yu-Gi-Oh's history of like, yeah, this kind of bad card was on the limited list because they genuinely didn't know what they were doing. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. All right, I, I went ahead and typed the next card up already. Ready? So let's go to number twelve. Laboratory maniac creature, human wizard. If you would draw a card while your library has no cards, you win the game. Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna say, it. I'm gonna say real. You think it's a real card? It feels like the Aeon Engine card from earlier, where it's like a really dumb effect, but it's situational enough to not like be really annoying, like to not be fake. It could be, but like I'm just gonna guess real. This is a real magic card, and it's actually funny that uh, this card for a long time was used in a bunch of like weird combo decks, but recently there a new better version of this card has come out, and it's like. So fucking annoying because it's actually extremely easy to exile your entire deck in magic. It's it's not very hard to get to get rid of your entire library if you want. <laughs> Which is That's kind of funny. Yeah. The 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 new version of it is Fossil's Oracle, which I thought about showing you because I, I thought you might get it wrong. But it's also yeah. like it read like a custom card. It it does definitely read like a custom card. I don't know why they designed the card like this. It's really fucking stupid. Uh, the Thassa's Thos, Thos, Oracle. When this thing enters the battlefield, look at the top X cards of your library, where X is your devotion to blue. Put up one of them onto the top of your library, and the rest at the, rest at the bottom in a random order. If X is greater than or equal to the number of cards in your library, you win. I hate this. Is it just... I don't get... I mean, it's I, fucking I, so. uh, by the way, Devotion to Blue is the number of blue mana symbols amongst all permanents you control. Oh. So when this enters, it'll be two, because it is two blue and it's mana cost. Yeah. Okay, I see. So the thing that makes this card fucking suck is that uh, it's the... 
lose, and then you just trigger it, and then you'll have it. You'll have greater than your deck, basically. Yeah. So the thing about this is that since it's a triggered ability, like. Uh, Lab Man was a replacement effect, which means you had to actually go to draw a card while your deck was empty to win. Uh, which means if your opponent had a removal spell, you would just lose right there because the effect wouldn't be active. But the way this card yeah. works is like you just have it enter the battlefield while your deck is empty, never try to draw a card or anything. And even if your opponent has a removal spell, the ability will still go off. I see. Which so is. The last one required setup, and it was basically not going to work if your opponent drew something decent to get rid of it. This card is like, oh, you just save it till the end and then just fire it off and you win. Well, I mean, they, they, the thing is, like, you could just place Lab Man in Falsus Oracle's place in most of the decks that run it, and your deck would be worse, but your deck would still basically function. Like, it wouldn't change that much at the end of the day. It's just that, like, it's just the fact that it's so much harder to interact with and you need so much, like, so many more specific answers that makes, like, Falsus Oracle a complete pain in the ass to deal with. You see. Okay. It's legitimately one of my least favorite card designs that they've come up with in a while. Okay. Here's the next card. Oh boy. Den Protector. Human, or creature, human warrior. Creatures with power less than Den Protector's power can't block it. Megamorph. Uh, you may cast this card face down as a 2-2 two, two creature for 3. Turn it face up at any time for its Megamorph cost and put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. When Dead Protector is turned face up, target or return target card from your grave to your hand. Um, it's a flip monster. Say, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say fake. It just feels like a lot. You think this is fake? Yeah. Final answer. Probably. This is a real magic card, and it was also a very important card during its standard time. I see. <laughs> so Megamorph was like a whole set mechanic, so it's like. It, it reads like a lot at first, but it's also like a redoing of the original morph mechanic, which didn't like put do the one one counter thing. So, I oh this is just, so this is just them explaining the car, like the mechanic and the card. Yeah, yeah. So that's why it's in the brackets. It, that means it's reminder text. Anything in like brackets like that is reminder text. Okay, so that's like old relinquished where they had to explain the ritual mechanic in the card. Text. <laughs> yeah, so it's a card with like seventy words because yeah. they didn't know how to tell you. How. How to do ritual summoning? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Magic just does that on all their cards, uh, whenever they can, like at the lower rarities. So that way, if you just like, open random packs, there's a better chance that you'll actually know how to play the fucking game, as opposed to needing to look everything up. Because <laughs> yeah, with Yu-Gi-Oh, it was like you could get a rule book, but you'd have to buy a structure deck for Magic. Do they even have a rule book? They do. Uh, no one reads it because it's fu- it's like it- it's such a pain in the ass. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, I- I'm gonna. Uh, is decent. It's not great, but it's okay. It's passable, I suppose. It doesn't explain half how literally anything works, but it at least tells you what the mechanics are. And you know, it's good to know. Yeah. Ma- Magic has like some sort of rule books that are more of like tutorial things that they hand out, but like the the like the the magic like uh, comprehensive rules are like, this fucking, like, legal document that you're, like... <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, I think that's just the dwarf paper, Valerie. I, I think if you're reading a magic rule book, that's about what you're getting. There's a lot of, like, mechanics in magic, from what I've seen. Oh, uh, yeah, they, they come up with new keywords, like, every set. Yeah, so it's like, oh, what, I'm reading the rule book. Uh, from which set? How outdated is this, co- is this rule book? So, well, I, I mean, you- generally the, uh, fucking... Uh, comprehensive rules are like updated and it's like a document that you find like a PDF online. Oh, so it's like a whole like actual PDF. Okay, I, I'm used to the paper one that you get that like Yu-Gi-Oh oh. gives you and even one I think gave you one. At least I know when I was a kid they might have had one. I, think. I don't remember. Yeah. Alright, here's the next card. <laughs> oh boy. Scrapyard Titan. Artifact creature. Construct. You can't spend mana mana to cast the spell. Artifact Convoke Artifact Delve. You may cast cast Scrapyard Titan from your graveyard. Trample? So Artifact Convoke and Artifact Delve are just uh convoke and delve, but you can only use artifacts to do them. So Artifact Delve, you can only exile artifacts from your graveyard, and Artifact Convoke, 
Uh, Convoked means you can, like, tap your creatures to uh, cast spells in your hand. So Artifact Convoked means you can only tap your Artifact creatures. Um, I'm just going to say Fate. I don't understand this card. <laughs> you, don't, you don't think it's real? I genuinely don't understand what it's supposed to do. Like, I could not tell you what the card effect does, what the point of it is. What well, it's a 10-10 it's with Trample. It's, what? It's a 10-10 with Trample. That, that's the point of the card, is, is that it's huge. Like, that's half of your life total. And it tramples over stuff, so you can't chump block it. Like, it's a huge guy that's super hard to cast, but it comes back from your graveyard and is giant. Like, that that's the idea. It's just big. Jeez. I don't know, because, like... Yeah, I'm just, I'm just going to stay with fake. I'm going to keep my, my, my thought. Because it just seems... I don't know. Is that your final uh, answer? Yeah. All right, this is a fake magic card. However, yeah. I want to yeah. share... Uh, the... Is that a card that's exactly this card? Just it's like, oh, it's a 9-9, nine, so, nine, not a 10-10. Ten, ten. Uh, no, so this is the card this is obviously based off of. And this card broke modern when it was released. It was like, it, it was like a, a tier zero format because of this card. Hogak, Eryzen, Necropolis, or Arisen. I can't read, okay? Yeah. You can't spend mana to, yeah. Convoke, Bell, each creature you tap while casting this spell pays for one of your mana of that creature's color. Each card you exile from your grave pays for one. You may cast this card from your grave trample. So it's literally almost the same card, except it's an 8-8. That's kind of... Well, kind of and it also doesn't have the artifact restrictions on its... Yeah. Version of Convoke and Delve, which it's which the same card, slightly weaker, but without like half, like it's without half of the pain in the ass to bring it out. Yeah, and, and this card was like so. What people did is they played this card called um, I've talked about this like a hundred times, but they played this card called Altar of Dementia. Yeah, it's Altar of Dementia, which has the ability where you can like as many times as you want during your turn sacrifice a creature to make someone mill cards equal to its power. And so hey. what they would do is they would use this target themselves to mill eight cards, which pays for the five delve, and they would tap through their dudes, do it again, bring it back. And they also played Bridge from Below, which made you a token every time something you controlled died. So if you had two Bridge from Belows in your grave, you could just loop that forever and mill your entire deck. And then you would just make a ton of zombies and bring Hogak back a bunch and then mill your opponent. And it was like, they would just kill you, like, on turn three every time. I see. <laughs> it was... And, and they like they had to ban multiple cards from the deck, and then it was still too good, and then they had to ban Hogak eventually. <laughs> it was like a whole thing. Fucking Hogak Summer. I want that this next card will be number fifteen, which is interesting. So this card, this is this is a Planeswalker. So this this is gonna this is gonna read pretty weird. <laughs> what rise the hunter? Grist, I think. But that's its problem. Legendary Planeswalker Grist, as long as. Grist is the <laughs> hunger tide. Isn't on the battlefield. It's a one. What? It's a one one creature in addition to its other types. Create a one one black and green insect creature token and mail a card. If an insect card was milled, put a lo 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 loyalty counter on Grist. Repeat the process. You may sacrifice a creature. When you do, tar destroy target creature or planeswalker. Each opponent loses life you put the number of creature cards in your graveyard, loyalty three. So, uh, how, how Planeswalkers work is that you can use one of their loyalty abilities, which is the plus one, minus two, minus five thing. You can use one of those each turn on a soft once per turn. Their loyalty is like their life total. They can be attacked like players. Uh, and so, like, if you plus one A goes from three to four, and you get that effect, you can minus two it to go from its loyalty down to... You have to have at least five loyalty to use the minus five. Uh, and it also has the incredibly weird ability where it's technically a creature as long as you, it's not on the battlefield. How do you activate the minus two, minus five thing? Um, you can just, like, basically all of its abilities share a soft once per turn. You can use any one you want as long as it has, en uh, it has, as long as it has enough loyalty to remove. So you have to have at least two loyalty to use the minus two. You have to have at least five loyalty to use the minus five. Do you get loyalty? Uh, the plus one ability. The plus one gives it loyalty. Hey, I see. I feel like planeswalkers sound fake when you explain them to people the first time, no matter what. Yeah, it's like it's a total like custom card, but I'm like, I think I seen one of the planeswalkers, and it didn't make much sense to me at all. Like, I, I did show you Minskin Boo. 
And I was like, yeah. yeah. It could just be a, like a cut. It could just be a planeswalker theme. It's that third effect, though. Because that third effect seems like it could be, like, broken as hell. Like, it's like, oh, yeah, you just clean up a game right there. Uh, for, for what it's worth, every, like, so that's what we call the ultimate of a planeswalker. It's, like, the most expensive ability to activate. And they're um, extremely hard to, you, like, you have to plus multi, plus them multiple times to get there. All Planeswalker ultimates are, like, super fucked up and usually just win you the game if you get them. But you usually just don't because your opponent just kills the Planeswalker. Game. Like, they have ways to shut it down. But yeah, because... Final effect is, like, if you, if you get to this point, yeah, good game. Yeah. Okay. GG easy. I'm gonna say it's real. The effects, except for the third one, but after hearing that's just kind of what they do... The effects feel like it's like, okay, the first effect, it makes a creature. The second effect, you can sacrifice that creature to pop a card. And I feel like that, it seems real, I guess. Yeah. Is that your final answer? Sure. This is a real magic card. I thought the fact that it was like a creature when it's off the battlefield would throw you off more. But it... Yeah, I kind of just ignored that and forgot it was there. It was honestly the, the plus one, minus two, minus five that was throwing me off. Like the... One and two, as I mentioned, makes sense as an effect. It's like, it makes a token that you contribute to pop. Like, that kind of makes sense to me. But it's like, okay, what about the minus five? But, like, knowing that's just what they do, like, that's the point of Planeswalkers, the minus five or whatever, that makes a lot more sense to me now. Yeah, the, so. the ultimate. Uh, a lot of them, uh, so, I, I guess I could... Uh, it's not actually worth going into, but, like, Planeswalker Ultimates do some weird shit that, like, no other card does. Like, there's this card called Karn Liberated, and it's ultimate, uh, so it's plus and minus both exile cards. And what its ultimate does is it makes you restart the game, but all the cards it exiled, uh, start the game on the battlefield under your control. So you just get to, like, you just, like, let's go again, but I get all this shit. <laughs> like, that's weird. That card, I, and I would have fully set the custom. I'm not even gonna lie. That card... That reads. That sounds literally like you made that up. <laughs> it's a I real mean, magic card. Sound like you make them up, but this that one is special. <laughs> All right. Seas of strength, instant. Target creature gets one one. Target creature gets one one to the end. What? Yeah. That's what it does. It gives a tar It gives a creature plus one plus one. It gives a creature plus one plus one, and it also gives a creature plus one plus one. Huh. So. The idea here is that, like, it can give one creature plus three plus three, or it can give one creature plus two plus two with one plus one plus one, or it can give three creatures plus one plus one. But since, like, typing that out as one block of text would be difficult, they just repeated it three times. And you can just choose three targets for it. I'm gonna... Let me think for one second. This one's interesting. I was going to say real again. You think it's a real magic card? That's your final answer? Mm-hmm. This is a real magic card, yeah. Uh, it, it seems baffling, but knowing that it's a multiplayer game makes like made it make a lot of sense. Well, it's not, not about not. it being multiplayer. It's just that like it's it, the. Uh, I mean, I get the points. Like you can buff up your own, or if you're playing the mo like playing with more people, you can choose someone to like buff up, and well, it makes more sense to me. Well, it, it, it's like. It's more if you have multiple creatures and you want to, like, spread the buff amongst your board in specific ways. Because the thing yeah. is, in Magic, it's, like, the uh, the the combat system is, like, actually interesting. Which I, I feel like that's mean to say about Yu-Gi-Oh! But I really do think it's, like, there's, like, no thought almost when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh! combat. But... Uh, de <laughs> depends on the deck. Some decks, absolutely. Like, Machina's, like, their cards are very much, like, battle phase focused, and it's a really interesting part of, like, their game plan with cards like Ruin Forest. But then it's like, what about every other deck in the game? And I say, yeah, no. Yeah. It's a uh, higher number. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, that's, I, it's, yeah. I, I mean, I, I get what you mean. Uh, let's go on to the next card. Let me, give me a second to type this out. Actually, I think I can just type it. I don't think it'll, like... I'll just explain the reminder text. For Rexy. Ma Crusher. Creature. <laughs> they're, they're horror. Trample. Toxic 2. Sacrifice a creature. Target creature you control. Gains Toxic 2 until the end of the turn. So, what Toxic 2 does uh, is whenever this creature deals damage to a player, that player gets that many poison counters, which in this case is 2. 
And what oh, what poison counters do is they're an alternate loss condition where if at any point a player has 10 or more poison counters, they lose the game instantly. So it's like a Venomanaga, except an entire like mechanic. This seems real, but the thing is with it is like it has Trample, which seems like that's too easy to activate. Because like Trample, you said, hits over or whatever. So like you would always hit two off. It feels weird. Well, if they have a bigger creature, they can just block this and, you know, stop you. So it is it is hard to block, but, like, they they, they can do stuff. And you, there is, like, multi-block, so you can block this with a bunch of stuff if you need to. Yeah, but also, like, it doesn't just target itself. It targets any creature you control, so you can summon a big thing, give it Toxic 2, and then they hit. If it has, if it has Trample, you can just hit, a, hit something. and that's Yeah, what... but at that point, you're probably just killing them with normal damage instead. Like... Poison only halves the damage you have to do to your opponent. It's not like it's not that much better than just killing them normally. I want to say fake. You think it's a fake magic card? Yeah. Is that your final answer? Mm -hmm. This is a fake magic card. Yeah. Good. So what's I'm funny cool. is that this toxic mechanic is something that they like. They just brought this back because they decided they didn't like the way they used to do uh, poison. It used to be a keyword called Infect, which just changed the damage from normal damage into Infect damage. Uh, and just did, it was just that instead. But what people did is they just played like all the cheapest Infect dudes and then played normal pump spells. So that they only had to do half the damage to their opponent, essentially. <laughs> it, it just... Like the effect felt weird. Um, you know, it's like... I don't know how to, I didn't really know how to describe it, it just didn't feel right as a card. It was like, like, Trample plus the gains Toxic 2, so giving you basically an easy way to start stacking up Toxic fell off. I don't know, but <laughs> on to, is it number 18 now, I think? Yeah. Nice. Hey, I'm at, I have 12 right, 5 wrong. Symphonic Barons land. That That's what makes you the mana to cast your spells. Add C, then add C for each card named Barons in your grave. Sacrifice Barons. Search your library for a card called Symphonic Barons and put it onto the battlefield tapped. Shuffle. I hate this card. Because it feels as fake as can be. I'm just going to say real. I'm going to shotgun real. That's is my it? final answer. Final answer. Okay, uh, this is a fake magic card. Oh, really? Yeah. It, I, it makes sense. I just assumed you were trying to trip me up here. No, th this is this is not real. Uh, I think it's actually pretty printable, as in, like, it it wouldn't be that bad if it did exist, but, like, they're very careful with, like, making cards that produce multiple mana, like lands, because, like, they, they printed a card called Ancient Two and then realized that was a big mistake. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it, it just didn't feel right, but it was just assumed because the last... Because I don't know, just felt it felt dumb, but like in a way where I could see that see it being real, you know. No, I have no idea what you mean, but that's. I don't know. I mean, magic's dumb. A lot of their card effects are weird. It's like reverse the order of the game, which will do something. It's Thirteen. I forgot what the card does. And I was just like, a card that minch like it sets Symphonic Barons way too much. And I was just like, I don't know, but I don't know. Just wanted to shock you this. See how life went. <laughs> uh, Alright, I got the next one uh, typed up already. Creature. Human Artificer. Fabricate 2. Fabricate 2. So, Fabricate 2 means when it enters the battlefield, you either get to make two 1-1 one, one, uh, creature tokens uh, called servos, or you put two one counters on this card. Why does it say Fabricate 2 twice? Because you get it twice. It enters the battlefield, and you either make two servos or put two one counters on it, and then you once again either put two one counters on it or make two servos. So again, I'm going to say real just because, I don't know, it seems too simple. I mean, oh, I didn't even say the name. I didn't even realize it. it Exquisite Life Cracker. I honestly didn't even see the name. It kind of blended in together with me with yeah. the last effect. It, this reminds me of, um, what was that card from earlier that was like Destroy One Thing, Soul Strike? Yeah. It like... It reminds me of that, where it's just, like, dumb, simple, single text, but it feels like that. I'm just going to say real, because the last one that liked this was fake. 
Like as a way that you could trip me up. This is a uh, fake magic card. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Seven. All right. We there, we we have one left. I have twelve right, seven wrong. I wonder if you'll understand why this one's even here at first. All right, final okay. card. Force of savagery, creature, elemental, trample, eight zero. What? It's an eight zero. When you play it, it just dies due to state based actions, but it has eight power, which is insane for a three drop. What? Uh, huh. Um. Let me read that eight card from earlier. And you'll see. Um, why would this exist? As a joke? Yeah, probably. You know what? I've been on a track of the last three were fake in a row. I'm going to say real for this one. Is that your final answer? Yeah. This is a real magic card, yeah. So... This card is from, uh, I think it was Time Spiral, or it was from Time Spiral Block, which was when they were being, it was from Future Sight, sorry. But it's still part of Time Spiral Block. This is when they were just, like, decided to just go all in on doing the dumbest shit imaginable in Magic. So the point of this guy is that you have to have, like, an, an, an Anthem effect that pumps your entire board, like, passively. And then if you do that, he'll come in as, like, a 9-1 or something. Uh, or you could, like... Use an effect that says whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you do something equal to its power. So it, it gets to trigger that effect right before it dies. Or something else where, like, you don't actually care that it doesn't stay around or something. So there are, like, some weird ways to use this effect. But on its own, it literally just dies. I see. So what are your thoughts about Magic the Gathering as a game after going through this experience? It's not good. Oh. <laughs> um... I don't know. I'm just not a fan of it, really. Uh, it's fine. I guess some of these are okay. Like, at least I got to kind of learn what a planeswalker is. And th I think those are actually kind of interesting. Like, the idea of a planeswalker, like, having the, fir the plus one effect kind of bounce into the plus the minus two effect that work. I mean, that could, it could literally only be for Grist. I don't know. But like how you said it was like or how how it seems like create a token tribute it to pop like that felt like a synergetic effect. And then the fifth effect, the third effect is like just win. Who cares? And that that's a neat idea. Beyond that though, I mean every other effect was just kind of like really annoying in a way that was odd. Like uh, I, this wasn't one of the ones you showed me, but I mean for like the t the, t the twenty, but like Thassa's Oracle or whatever was weird. <laughs> Just did, like a lot of them didn't make sense in a way of like i guess but they were just odd um i, like I feel like a lot part. of the effects would make more sense if you played the game more because like it, it does play very differently to Yu-Gi-Oh. and i was as this went on i started understanding it a little more how like card design like seeds of strength i think was the, the point of me really like looking at a card and going oh i get it like i get the point like, i understand like a multiplayer game you could do this in multiplayer or you could do this in single player to buff up buff up report like that's the point where i started like putting it together i love this i feel like it kind of clicked with me mm -hmm. but beyond that it was just kind of like whatever you know yeah um you know I, my closing thing i will say it's impressive you sent me 20 custom cards in a row <laughs> can, I, can i send you one last card i just want to see how good you think this card is because it's another planeswalker and it, it's pretty famous so i, I want to hear your opinion on it Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, no, I thought I said. I thought you said where you were done with custom cards. No, this is not a Magic: The Gathering custom card. This is that's, a real Magic card. To the top card of whoever's library, put that card in the bottom of that library. You may. You can put it back on top if you want. Oh, if you feel like it. Okay. Okay. Zero. Draw three cards. Put two from your hand on top of the library. Okay. Minus one. Return target creature to the hand. Exile our cards from the library, then then that player shuffles their hand into the library. Hmm. Well, that is a minus twelve, and it starts at three. So yeah. So even if you use the effect, you're still waiting like four turns. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, fake is. <laughs> no, it's not um, fake. <laughs> um, it's not even the premise of this section of the video. Like extremely broken, or 
really bad. Well, I would only be showing you if it was one of those two options. Yeah, and I couldn't tell you which. I'm gonna guess... I'm gonna guess, uh... It's really good, maybe? Yeah, so for multiple yeah. years, this was considered one of, like, the strongest fair magic cards ever printed. It, like... Honestly, I do like the minus one and zero effect where you can put a creature to your hand and then put it back in the deck if you, like, okay, I have this on the field, but I want it back in the deck for a specific effect or whatever. And it's just like, yeah, let's put it back in the deck or put it back in my hand, draw three, put that back in the deck, and then activate the other effect to maybe get it back or whatever. Like, that's a neat idea. The other two, I was just like, oh, I don't know. So mm -hmm. it's actually really funny because all four abilities on this card are extremely powerful. Like, the minus 12 you almost never get to, but... Like, all three of the abilities are, like, super strong in ones that you'll want to use. Like, uh, uh, it's hard to, like, figure out what you want to do with your Jace on a given board state because it's, like, all the abilities are so strong. The zero is, ex like, uh, that, that's, just, that's the effect of a card called Brainstorm. And Brainstorm uh, is considered one of the strongest magic cards because, like, uh, just draw three, put two bad cards back, use any effect to make yourself shuffle. Like, it... It, it, it's it, like insane how much better that makes your hand uh in the minus two like especially because lands are uh, a, a common thing in like every deck basically right and lands are basically just garnets uh laid into the game so being able to just like look at the top card and force your opponent to either draw something bad or stop them from drawing something good can make it really hard for your opponent to ever come back if you're in a controlling board state and the minus one is basically only ever used to bounce threats so that you can, like, have longer to deal with it. Like, you never really want to bounce your own stuff in Magic, at least not for your use of Jace on that turn. But it, it is really nice to have that, like, removal option on the card. I see. Yeah. Uh, this card was actually banned in Standard at a time when bans in Standard were extremely uncommon. Because, like, I think, like, seven of eight decks uh, at, like, the Pro Tour or something were Jace of Mind Sculptor decks or something. It was <laughs> It was really bad. That's interesting. Okay.